Chapter 7 of Our Little Spanish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Spanish Cousin by Mary F. Nixon Rollet. Easter in Sevilla, what a gay and charming time it is! Flowers are everywhere blooming in beauty and all the people seem joyous in the thought that the long season of fasting is over fernando and juanita had arrived in the city on the saturday before palm sunday and were wild with delight at seeing their cousins mariquita pepita and angel and in looking forward to the delights of the week's holiday with its processions and fetes beginning with the beautiful procession of the palms on palm sunday all through holy week are the processions and celebrations and the little folk thoroughly enjoy them their older brother and sister were there also and full of wonderful tales of what they had done at school fernando thought pablo was a wonderful being and that everything he did was perfect he could hardly wait until he himself was big enough to go away to college and little juanita felt quite the same way about augustia who had learned many things in the convent indeed nina she said it is pleasant at school with the girls but mother justina makes one work so hard and that the play hours are few i have embroidery to make and lessons to say and my class learns French as well as Castilian. But the other girls are charming. Most of all, I like Paquita de Guiterras in Americana. At least she comes from the island of Cuba, and the girls say that she is an Indian, and that her mother was an Indian princess, married to her father, a noble Spaniard. Of this I cannot say, and she herself does not relate but she says in cuba the spaniards have often married the indians and have been kind to them and have not destroyed them as have the americanos in the estados unidos well nina paquita is the merriest of girls she has always some prank to pull upon some one and indeed she cares not if it is the mother superior herself so she can have her joke her aunt good sister mercedes is always fretting for fear lest paquita should be in disgrace but it worries paquita not at all one night she did the funniest thing there was one girl who was very mean to the little ones always teasing them and they dare say nothing as she is the niece of mother superior and she believes nothing against her this teresa alcantara found one little girl and teased her until paquita could stand it no longer and flew at teresa and bit her hand sister turned at that moment and saw the bite but she had not seen what had gone before and would not listen to what i tried to tell her and paquita is always too proud to make excuses and just looked at sister so fiercely from her great black eyes that sister was still more displeased thou art but a savage wildcat she said and took her to mother superior for punishment she could not have any playtime for a whole week and she would have to apologize to teresa too but i think she hated that the worst of anything but she got even with her as you shall hear she found out that teresa was terribly afraid of cats and one night when we were all safely tucked away in our little beds there came from behind Teresa's curtain a terrible scream, as she jumped out of bed and rushed up and down the dormitory. Such a breach of decorum was never seen before, and the nuns were shocked to a degree. Teresa kept shrieking, A wild beast is in my bed! A wild beast is in my bed! And after calming her down, they went to investigate. What do you think they found? A feather duster. It was tucked under the sheets and who could have put it there no one knew but everyone felt that paquita was the only one who could have thought of such mischief 
but the sisters did not try to find out for one of them had seen teresa teasing the little girl and knew why paquita disliked her so much and after that the big bully let us little ones alone oh it must be so nice sighed juanita while pablo laughed and said that those things were girl stories and that far more exciting things happened at the naval college especially when they all went on a cruise on easter sunday morning the children went to the cathedral to see the wonderful dances which take place but three times a year fernando and juanita were struck dumb with the beautiful cathedral so unlike the gothic one of granada for this one at sevilla is a saracenic church built hundreds of years ago begun by the moorish sultan yabak al Ansar in eleven eighty four how strange it seemed to see dancing in church fernando and juanita sat beside their mother on their little camp stools for there are no pews in spanish churches the whole center of the church is empty and the people kneel there during mass or if they are too tired or too little to stand they rent camp stools for half a cent and an old woman who has them in charge hobbles along with a stool which they may keep while the service lasts the men generally stand and it is interesting to see them settle themselves in a comfortable position when the sermon begins and stand there almost without moving the preacher speaks sometimes a half an hour sometimes a whole hour but the hearers do not seem to mind for these spanish monks are very fine preachers as the children gaze at the beautiful altar covered with flowers there came a sound of music violins flutes flagellates and hot boys all making a quaint harmony and with the music was mingled the sound of youthful voices fresh and sweet and a band of boys entered the chancel and glided down the altar steps danced quietly singing as they danced their bodies swayed to and fro in time to the music at first slowly then the time quickened castanets click clicked with the other sounds and the boys moved faster and faster still in perfect time yet did not with wild abandon but rather with dignified respect for the place for they were quaintly dressed in the court costumes of the middle ages on their heads were big spanish hats turned up at one side with a sweeping blue feather a mantle of light blue was over one shoulder their vests were of white satin and their hose and shoes of white the boys danced on and the great bells of the garlada rang out and then they vanished the music grew softer and softer until its last strain sounded far away like a floating wave of heavenly harmony how pretty the dance was said little juanita as they walked home from the service why do they dance in church the holy scriptures say david danced before the lord her mother answered so perhaps that is the reason the Sevians think this is a form of worship but you must ask your cousins to tell you how it was first done do tell me mariquita said the little girl and her cousin said i do not know how it happened at first but it has been done ever since the moors were here in sevilla only once in hundreds of years has it been stopped and then an archbishop said it's not right to have dancing in church he made every one very angry for the people said what our fathers did is good enough for us so they went to the pope and he said that he could not tell unless he saw the dance so the boys and musicians were taken to rome and there danced before the holy father who said i see no harm in this any more than the children's hosannas before our lord when he entered jerusalem let them have their dance so long as the clothes which they wear may last then they came back and so determined were they to continue it forever that they never let the clothes wear out to this day if one piece of suit shall be worn it is so quickly mended or repaired that no suit has ever worn out all at once and so these are the same suits as those worn long ago i am so glad they still have it said fernando 
for I wouldn't have missed seeing it today for anything. End of chapter 7